You guys won't believe what I found next. I'm just chilling next to the river, minding my own business. Well, you know me, I can't keep my nose out of the woods for too long. I thought I did see something this time. I thought it was gonna be a fish drowning, but instead it was a pair of Yeezy Blinks in a size nine and a half when Kanye was still with Nike. I don't know what it is, I keep finding these shoes that are worth thousands of dollars. Maybe I should try my luck hitting the lottery, huh? This cat kind of just popped out of nowhere, I don't know where it came from. Hopefully this black cat will give me good luck instead. And he said if you like the video, he will also give you good luck. That's false. You can't get good luck from liking the video. These shoes look pretty destroyed, I don't even know if we could save them. Hopefully they're not too bad underneath all that mud. I'm going to submerge the shoes in the waters of Jordan to baptize them. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to loosen up any dirt that's trapped in the shoes. And two, it's going to free any evil spirits that are still trapped in the shoes too. I'm going to use New Life Kick Suede Revive to clean the uppers. I want to remove as much mud as I can before I start cleaning the inside. For the inside of the shoes, I'm going to use Angelus Easy Cleaner. This is going to help me loosen up any trapped dirt inside of the fabric. And I'm also going to use steam to help me clean the shoes. Once the cleaning is done, we just have to let it fully dry. The first thing I want to tackle is to remove the midsoles. The midsoles look good from the outside, but on the inside, they're starting to crumble. So I'm using a blow dryer to help me melt the glue on the footbed. I'm putting a shoe last inside to help me stabilize the shoes while I'm removing the midsole so I don't crease the uppers. I'm using an X-Acto knife to help me remove these bigger chunks of foam. Then I'm going to switch to my Dremel to shave away any excess foam to get down to the bare leather. For the glue that's still on the toe area, I'm going to cut it with an X-Acto knife. I want to give credit to A1, Flippin' and Gifted. I'm pretty sure I've seen all three of them do this to their shoes when removing the factory glue. I wouldn't say that this method is easier, but it is safer than using cotton balls and acetone. If you accidentally put too much acetone on the cotton ball and you wipe away the glue, the excess acetone could seep through the suede above the glue line and it'll spread throughout the suede. At least by cutting it, you won't have that issue but you could risk cutting too deep into the suede, so you need to be careful for both methods. Now that we've taken care of the uppers, it's time to take care of the rubber sole. I'm going to use a heat gun to melt the factory glue and use my spoon to remove as much of the foam as I can. Excuse me, did I say spoon? I meant midsole remover 3000. If you want, it's only $10 plus $5 shipping. So once you remove the remaining midsole crumbs, you can use acetone and cotton balls to clean up the soles. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I posted why you can't use an Air Jordan 3 as a donor for a Yeezy 1 midsole swap. The Jordan 3 midsole is a lot wider than the Yeezys. They don't have the same dimensions, that's why they won't work. If you manage to find a pair of Nike Air Revolutions or a fake pair of Yeezys, they'll work a whole lot better. But with the fake Yeezy soles, it's still not a perfect fit. We still have to cut up some areas, adjust the thickness of the foam, and stretch the midsole so it could fit on the sole. There's too much foam on the heel, that's why the rubber is not fitting flush on the heel. So we're going to fix that by shaving off the foam. I make it sound too easy, but you want to be careful with the edges. It's better to shave too little than too much because you can't take back what you've taken off already. The rubber soles fit a whole lot better. Now it's time to clean up the top of the midsole. 
This material got stuck on the midsole when I was removing the uppers. You want the midsole as bare as possible because you don't want to glue on top of that old material. We're going to prep the midsoles by removing the factory paint with acetone and con balls. I want to try something I haven't done before. Before I paint the midsoles, I'm going to apply a black dye first. So when the midsole paint does crack, you don't see the white midsole. You just see the black dye right behind the paint. This is the same method Naldo did for his custom dirty breads. After the dye has been absorbed in the midsole, we're going to remove any excess with cotton balls and acetone. This is very important if you want your paint to stick directly to the midsole. If I just paint directly on top of the dye, it'll crack for a swear. I'm not going to paint the midsole yet. I'm going to paint it after I glue the soles. Before I put glue on the midsoles, I want to make sure I have a nice clean surface so I'm using cotton balls and acetone to help me out. I'm going to use heat to help me make the glue tacky. Once it's tacky, I'm going to align the corners, making sure everything is lined up as perfectly as I can. During this step, I messed up. The midsoles didn't line up properly with the rubber soles, so I'm going to use my heat gun to help me separate the midsoles. If this happens to you, you want to be very careful. You want to make sure that the heat gun is moving constantly so you don't have any burn spots. Once it was fully glued, I started painting the midsole with black Angelus paint. After a few coats of black paint, I'm going to airbrush the flat 4 coat varnish. And this is to help me make the paint scratch resistant. We still need to adjust the height on the midsoles. You can still see the previous glue line from the original midsoles. Our goal is to shave off enough foam so you don't see that line anymore. I'm going to use my Dremel to shave off any excess foam that's making the upper sit too high. Once we're done shaving off the foam, it's time to reattach the uppers back to the midsole. After I reheat the glue to make it tacky, I want to make sure that the heel is centered with the midsole before I start clamping them together. We're going to repeat the same steps until the whole shoe is fully glued.
when I'm done gluing, I just really like to test out the re-glue. So I try to separate the areas as hard as I can on purpose. If it does separate, I just need to do a quick touch up. Sometimes the separation is too small for my brush to go through. So I do make the hole bigger. Another thing we need to touch up is the paint peeling off with the tape. This hurts because I thought I prepped the mentos properly. It's all good, things happen. We just gotta touch it up and move forward. Before we start applying glue on a toe, we want a nice clean surface for our glue to stick to. So I'm using a Q-tip and acetone to help me clean the rubber and suede. I made sure I took off any excess acetone off of the Q-tip with a towel because I don't want any acetone to bleed underneath the tape and onto the suede. To fix the paint issue, I'm going to use sandpaper to smooth down the paint. I'm using 400, 800, and 1000 grit to sand down the midsole. If I don't sand down the part where the paint ripped, you could see a very hard line. So the point of this is to smooth it down as much as we can and then paint over it. I'm going to dye the air bubble black using Dark Knight Soul Dye. This is one of the best dyes I've ever used. I was so careful not to touch the dye with my gloves and accidentally touching the glow in the dark soul or the pink sock liner. This reminds me so much of that episode of Spongebob where Mr. Krabs asked him to paint his house. After I apply the dye, I'm gonna let it sit overnight to fully absorb the color. I'm using a Q-tip with a little bit of water to help me remove any excess dye. Look at that, looks so much better than a white air bubble. Now this trick I learned from flipping Kicks, you take an electric shoe cleaning brush and brush the suede on top. It'll loosen up the fibers making a suede look extremely smooth. Just watch the suede how it looks after I comb it with my fingers. And that's pretty much it, we're done restoring these Yeezys. The restoration came out great. If you guys enjoy the restoration process, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of fun finding these shoes in the wild and I hope you guys do too. I'll see you guys in my next video.